Since 9-11, Guantanamo Bay is most notorious for housing suspected terrorists. Access Minnesota was able to talk to attorney Susan Gertner, who has the rare opportunity to monitor the trial of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed at Guantanamo. Susan Gertner is a partner at the law firm of Gray, Plant & Moody in downtown Minneapolis. She is the former Ramsey County attorney and most recently was selected by the American Bar Association and the Department of Defense to be one of the civilian lawyers monitoring the trial of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed at Guantanamo Bay. And we need to be up front right away, Susan. There's a bit of a disclaimer. You do not speak for the American Bar Association or the Department of Defense. That's right. I was honored to be asked by the American Bar Association to observe and I will follow up that experience with a report to the president of the American Bar Association, but any views expressed are those of my own and not the bar. Susan, welcome to Access Minnesota. Happy to be here. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, or KSM as we'll refer to him going forward, has been called the mastermind of the 9-11 attacks. Tell us about the specific charges against him and the trial itself. The charges against KSM and the other four co-conspirators who are currently uh, on trial at Guantanamo uh, essentially relate to the murder of alleged murder of 3,000 U.S. citizens. And so uh, there are murder charges as well as uh, other kinds of uh, related charges that result from the death of those individuals. Tell us more about your role as an observer at the trial. Are you looking for misconduct or instances where the defendant's rights may not be watched properly? I think that the role of an observer on behalf of the ABA or any of the other various non-governmental organizations who send observers is to essentially be the eyes and the ears of the international community to watch these proceedings and to be able to report back to our entities, to uh, our communities as to how things are going in Guantanamo. And it's my understanding, too, that the uh, video feed is on a delayed basis. What is the reason for that? The reason for that is very simple, and that is to avoid spillage of classified information. As you can imagine, a trial that relates to the 9-11 uh, uh, and the conspiracy involving that, uh, that assault on American soil uh, involves a lot of information that is properly classified and is important for national security reasons uh, that it is kept uh, secret. And we should point out, of course, that this is under the military justice system. It's a military trial, not in the civilian court system. Tell us some of the principal differences between the military justice system and the civilian courts. Well, it, actually, it is the military commission process is a hybrid. It is neither a courts martial process, nor is it a federal civilian trial. And it's something in between. And so because of that, and because of the fact that uh, we as a, a, a nation have limited experience with military commissions, uh, which are used in connection with acts of war, uh, because we have limited experience with them and certainly not at the level of the 9-11 trial, uh, to some extent the, the rules are being made up as they go along. And I don't mean that in any uh, disparaging way, it's just that this is uh, a big deal. Uh, the stakes for both sides are very high. KSM has made allegations that he has been tortured at Guantanamo. Uh, what role have these allegations played in the trial so far? Certainly the issue of torture is a, a layer over everything that happens. It is uh, to some extent the, the elephant in the living room or, uh, you know, again, not wanting to be flippant in the use of a metaphor, but even if torture isn't directly being spoken of in the courtroom during the proceedings. It is certainly an important part of uh, people's frame of reference. Uh, certainly my traditional criminal justice professional background uh, leads me to point out that when you have someone 
saying something, say a confession, and you go back and learn the circumstances of that statement and perhaps uh, there was, if not torture, um, some kind of oppressive procedures in order to get that statement to, to be made, that makes uh, the system question whether or not the statement is accurate. Now, that's a little more complicated issue in these proceedings because, of course, KSM uh, was on Al Jazeera claiming responsibility, essentially in, uh, admitting that he was the mastermind of the 9-11 attack. Uh, and of course, that was before there was any question of what, what they call enhanced interrogation techniques. One of the other impacts is if there is clearly, if there's evidence that someone has been tortured or otherwise uh, been subjected to very uh, oppressive um, uh, conditions when they are confined prior to trial, that can be used as a mitigating factor in deciding what their sentence should be. In other words, uh, to some extent, if they've been punished by the way they were treated in the pretrial process, as they were detained waiting trial or going through trial, uh, if that involved some kind of punishment in and of itself, then that is something that the judge can consider in deciding what the final punish would, punishment would be if convicted. In your role as an observer at this trial, you've been to a U.S. military installation that very few people have seen. What are your impressions of a Guantanamo based upon what you've seen so far? Austere is a, a, a word that comes to mind. Um, uh, obviously, when I was heading off to Cuba in the end of January, I got a few remarks here and there from people about, oh, going on a beach vacation, huh? And of course, I couldn't have been uh, farther away from in, that kind of experience. Uh, the uh, observers, the media, sleep in tents, uh, walk down the way to go to the latrine. Uh, it's uh, very basic living. Uh, you are cut off, really, in many significant ways from your practice. Uh, if you're an attorney, uh, your life back home, no cell phone service whatsoever for the civilians, uh, very limited internet access, and so you're really uh, on an island in every significant way. What are your plans going forward? You've already been there to see some of the pre-trial activities of what comes next? Well, the pretrial process continues and realistically speaking, I think the trial is years away, whether it's two years, four years, or even more. Uh, and so I hope to return uh, and uh, observe more of the proceedings. But for the reasons that I talked about, uh, it's, it's, it's impractical to do it a whole lot. Um, and uh, there are others who want to serve in this capacity. But as I say, I hope to get back and see more. I was so impressed with the presiding military judge. He was excellent. He was patient. He was thoughtful. You could tell he was prepared. The attorneys on both sides, both for the United States as well as for KSM and the other four defendants, were excellent advocates working very, very hard for their clients. I, I, consider it the World Series of, of uh, military law. That's the level of advocacy that I saw. And when you think about it, um, you have to admire particularly the attorneys working for the defendants because it can't be easy to uh, be known as the lawyer who's working heart and soul and long hours and diligently and applying all your skills and experience uh, to defend someone who's accused of them being the mastermind of 9-11. But out of a respect for the rule of law and the very, very important premise that everyone is entitled to a vigorous defense and because of the principle that the eyes of the world are on Guantanamo Bay uh, and how we deal with these people who we have labeled as our um, great enemy, uh, it matters how the process 
goals. Susan Gertner, thanks so much for joining us on Access Minnesota. My pleasure. Thanks for your interest.